Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video, I am going to be testing out the new Emco Beauty Ultra Stay Flawless Foundation. I feel as though Emco Beauty has been a real hit lately and I know a lot of people are interested in their products, so it was very exciting to see that they released a foundation. Some details about this foundation, it is available from Woolworths or from the Emco Beauty website. It retails for $28 and it comes with 35 mils of product. So a little bit more than your average foundation, but it is almost $30, which is quite pricey for more of a drugstore supermarket foundation. The foundation comes in a total of 10 shades, which is quite disappointing. Most of them are pretty beige toned, and then you've got two on the deeper side. I picked up the shade Classic Ivory, which is described as a neutral undertone. What I do like is that they have listed the undertones for the foundations. When it comes to drugstore, I feel like that's something that isn't done as much as high-end foundations, so it's nice to see that they have included the undertones. Now, the foundation is described to have a medium to full coverage. It says it will feel lightweight on the skin without fading or rubbing off throughout the day. And it claims to control oil and shine for up to 24 hours. And then it also says it leaves a smooth and radiant finish. All right, well, if you're excited for this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. Let's get into testing out this foundation. Okay, so here is what the foundation looks like. It comes in a nice glass bottle with a pump, which I love. As I mentioned, I have the shade Classic Ivory, and I do think it's going to be too dark for me, just looking at it in the bottle. Online, it is in the lineup as the fairest shade, and I'll insert a picture of the model they chose for Classic Ivory. She does look very fair, and just looking at this, I'm like, hmm not sure. So this is described to have a neutral undertone. The next shade up is Ivory, which is a neutral pink. That one probably could have worked for me too, actually. If you look at the arm swatches though, the fair shades don't look fair. It is literally just like 10 shades of art. Oh, nine shades of beige and one deep shade. So I have my Astralis Matchmaker Lightning Drops on deck because I think I'm gonna need them. All right, so I've just put two pumps onto my little palette here and it definitely looks dark. As you can see, it is more of a thicker formula. It is running a little, but it's not extremely liquidy. I'll swatch this on my face so you can see what the shade looks like straight out of the bottle. And then I'll just swatch my Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. I do really like this shade. <laughs> now, although this one looks to be blending into my skin tone on my face, look at the difference between my face and my chest. This Maybelline one is more my tone. So that's what I like to match to. I'm going to put some lightning drops into the Enco foundation and see where I can get it. Now, usually I like to go in with an anti-redness primer, especially on a day like today where I am having a few breakouts, but I won't when I'm testing this foundation out because I want to see its true level of coverage without me manipulating it and already hiding my blemishes. Okay, so let's see how this shade goes. Yes, that's a bit better, isn't it? All right, so I'm going to go in with my sponge and just blend that out. Okay, so I would definitely say a medium coverage. It has a nice satin matte finish. There is a little bit of a glow to my cheek here, but I can still see these blemishes. For reference, I do have normal combination skin. As you can see, I do get a few breakouts and throughout the day, I get a little oily in my T-zone. All right, I feel like that side looks quite nice. It's sitting well over my blemishes. It's not like clinging to them and looking dry at all. So here is a close-up of what one layer looks like. I'm really liking the finish, but I definitely want to go in with a second layer to see if I can get some more coverage around these blemishes. I'm also going to take it down my neck a little because I just feel like it's just a little bit off. All 
All right, and then here is what two layers looks like. I think it's done a pretty good job at covering those blemishes without having anything else underneath. You can see that glow to my skin when I turn my face, which is really nice. I honestly think I could go like a few more of those lightning drops, which is a bit of a bummer because looking at the model, she looks as fair as me. This is not that fair. But besides the shades, I feel like the formula is quite nice. It built up easily and it's sitting really beautifully on my skin. It doesn't feel heavy or cakey, quite lightweight. And I did use a total of two pumps. All right, I'm back with my makeup completed. I am liking how it's sitting, but there are a few issues already. So I put on concealer and I set under my eyes around my nose and mouth with powder and a little bit in my forehead here. I then went ahead and used a cream bronzer. I did use the Emco cheek tint for blush, but I didn't set the rest of my face with powder. So it has dried down where there's no powder. It feels fine. Around my mouth, I feel like it's already starting to look a little cakey though. If you can see around my nose here, and just around my lips. It's still sitting quite well over my blemishes. They look fine, but it's just in the corners of my mouth. It's looking a little heavy. I did go in with a second layer there because I was trying to cover these blemishes. So that could be it, but I did not use a lot of powder. I used my Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil and I used a brush to apply it. So quite light with the powder. It's looking great on my forehead. My skin does look quite flawless. My pores don't look too big. It still feels very lightweight on the skin, so I'm going to wear it for the rest of the day. I will come back and give you an update. I will also continue to wear this foundation throughout the week at work. I feel like that's where it really gets put to the test because I'm wearing it in real life, going to work, getting hot and sweaty. So I will come back with an update after a few days of wear and let you know how it's been going and what my final thoughts are. All right, I am back. It has almost been six hours of wearing the foundation. First things first, I had sunglasses on today, so it's missing off my face. <laughs> Let's just ignore that. All right, so I did go and spend a bit of time outside today. I was walking around the sun for a few hours and it is just not looking good at all. First of all, my eyes have all creased here. I wore the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer, which I wear all the time. I set with powder and it never does this. So I don't know what the heck is going on. Next, it is fading off of my nose and it looks all patchy and super cakey around my mouth. See my nose here. Like it just looks disgusting. Um, on my forehead here, it has rubbed off. Now I didn't set there with powder, but there was nothing there to be rubbing it off anyway. Like I wasn't wearing a hat. So I don't know why it has faded from the edge of my face here. It just looks thick and heavy on my skin. I'm not very impressed right now, especially for only six hours, but I will wear it to work tomorrow in more normal conditions, like my day-to-day -day conditions. I don't go out into the sun very often for hours at a time, so it could just be that but I'll get back to you after I've worn it for a few days at work. Hello. Okay, so I have worn the foundation to work today. I've had it on for just over eight hours. It's holding up pretty good, but I just don't think it's my favorite. As soon as I applied it this morning, it just looked heavy and really like makeup-y. <laughs> I did end up setting my entire face with powder today to see if it kept it in place a little longer and it's definitely helped, but I can still see around my eye is creasing a bit and I don't usually get that. Maybe it's because I turned 29, I got some extra wrinkles. <laughs> I feel like it's doing a pretty good job at controlling oil and shine. I can see a little bit throughout my T-zone, but nothing too crazy. It has started to break up a little bit around my mouth and chin again. And just like around my mouth, it just looks heavy. So I did get a little hot today, not as hot as yesterday. 
And so around my, like above my lip there, you can see it's kind of started to crack. It's come off a bit on my nose here and just on these blemishes, it looks, it just looks cakey to me. My chin has started to crack too. I feel like it's looking really good on my cheeks here, but I feel like this part of my face, it's actually showing my pores a lot more than usual. It's also fading a little bit around my forehead here. I'm pretty sure I've made up my mind on this foundation, but I will give it one more try tomorrow. I will also try using a little less foundation. I only use two pumps, which is pretty average when I apply foundation, but I will go a little bit less and maybe try just shearing it out a bit more and seeing if that makes it look less cakey. I feel like I do need to go in with the powder though because of yesterday, how it faded in quite a few areas. All right, well, that is the update for today. I will see you soon. All right, I'm back. I have tested the foundation out again for another day. It has currently been on for eight and a half hours. So to me, that's kind of like average wear time for foundation. So today I only used one pump of foundation to one pump of whitening drops. Whereas yesterday I did two foundation like one and a bit whitening drops. It was still more than enough coverage and it felt better on the skin. Right now, it does still look a little cakey in some areas, but nowhere near as bad as yesterday. If I had to go somewhere, I would take this off. Like it doesn't look good, but it's better. So again, I've had some fading around the hairline. My nose is also a little oily and even though it's not that bad, the foundation does claim to control oil. So that's definitely a fail because it happened yesterday as well. Same kind of areas as yesterday where it's rubbing off and not looking very nice um, on my mustache area, the bottom of my nose, around my mouth and my chin. The cheeks still look fine. I do have a bit of creasing around my eyes again. I don't know what that's about, but overall it does not look good in this whole area. So mm, I really don't know if I'm gonna try it out again. Tomorrow I have a 10 hour shift and this just isn't going to last. So I think my final verdict is... <laughs> I had to duck out real quick. My brother just came over. So the lighting's probably changed a bit, but my overall thoughts are that I'm not overly impressed with this foundation. For starters, I have to mix a shade and Although it is easy enough to do that, I have so many foundations that I do not need to be mixing the shade to get it lighter. So it's kind of a bit of an inconvenience. I do like the finish of it when it's first applied, but I really look for longevity in a foundation as well and how it wears. And this just doesn't stand out to me. If it was an amazing foundation that lasted a really long time, looked good all day, I could put up with the fact that I have to mix a shade, but because it doesn't, those two factors together, mm. If you're going to pick this foundation up, I would love to know in the comment section below if you've tried it out. Also let me know your thoughts and leave your skin type as well because that could be helpful for people reading through the comments. Unfortunately, this foundation wasn't a winner for me, but I still hope this review was helpful for you. If you enjoyed watching, please give it a thumbs up as it really supports my channel. And if you want to see more foundation reviews, I do have an entire playlist full of them. So I will have that linked in the description box below. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. Otherwise, I hope you are all having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.